secret location. It's the Tom Likas Show. That's terribly fascinating, man. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And as I sit here, I wonder now, we're coming down to 13 days before Election Day. 13 days. It's very exciting. All kinds of reports on the polls. Now I'm seeing polls today that say that the race is tightening up as we get close to Election Day. Uh, McCain is uh, shown to be uh, closer. Uh, John McCain has gained among whites and people earning less than $50,000. Which is interesting if you have the other candidate saying he's not going to raise taxes on people who make less than $250,000 a year and people under 50000 are siding with the other guy. Very strange. The Associated Press poll shows the race tightening up as well. And... Um, it's interesting how uh, one day you get one poll that says Barack Obama's up by 10 points. And the next day uh, you read that uh, a poll that says uh, Obama 44%, McCain 43%. The race narrowed after the third debate. But again, uh, it's all different polls with all different methodology. And honestly, who knows which one is right? All I could say is if you want your guy to win, you better plan on going out and actually voting. Because if you sit this one out, this is going to be a very tight election when it's all over. I happen to believe it's going to be tight because I think lots of people will lie to the pollsters and say they're voting for the black guy when they're not. So if you want your guy to win, you better plan on going out and voting, whoever your guy happens to be. My guy happens to be Obama. I know who your guy happens to be. But uh, whoever it is, I would say getting out there and voting is going to be critical. Because I do think the race is closer than some of the polls have said. If only because I do think lots of people lie to pollsters. Some of them do it intentionally. Some of them do it because they're embarrassed or they're trying to be politically correct. But nonetheless, there it is. So the excitement is mounting and the uh, tension is mounting. The stock market dropped almost 500 points again today. Another lousy day on the stock market. And honestly, I don't think we're going to see any sustained good news in the stock market until we know who the president's going to be, whoever it is, because Wall Street does not like uncertainty. Wall Street likes to know where we're going so everybody can start investing in the stocks they think are going to do well under a particular president. For example, there are probably people who think that health care stocks will do badly under Barack Obama and that uh, alternative energy stocks will do well. There are people who will believe that oil company stocks will do better under McCain and that um, environmental stocks will do lousy, as an example. So uh, people are just kind of sitting on the sidelines or uh, trying to take any profits they have now. Some people are trying to take profits before the possibility of a capital gains tax increase, etc. And then some people are just waiting to see if they're going to get fired. Is that you? You worrying about that? We've talked on the program many times about what people are afraid of. And many people are afraid right now. Many people are afraid. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't feel right. We haven't had hard times like this in a long time. And uh, my belief is that you have to have hard times sometimes. But that they don't last forever any more than good times last forever. So um, I'm always taking your pulse and as we get down to the Final two weeks before the election. I think it's very important to just uh, stay uh, with your ear close to the ground and figure out how people feel at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Tom, how are you, sir? It's a pleasure to speak with you. I'm sure it is. Well, first time, long time. And I, uh, one thing that just really strikes me as funny is that how people just don't understand how taxes work. I mean, they, they cry that, you know what, I support the war and I support this and I support all these government programs, but they're not sitting back to see where that money's coming from. And they're not sitting back to say, you know what, I need to do my part by paying more taxes or, or, you know, cutting back on my own little economy to be able to afford to send that money to the government so that they can go do the job that we've asked them to do. I just don't understand why people don't get the fact that if we're going to ask for it, we have to be willing to pay for well, it. Well, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense, and here's why. It's the same society that thought they could buy houses they couldn't afford. <laughs> Very the, true. <laughs> the same society that runs up thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt, and they make twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars a year. Right. I mean, it's the it's the something for nothing society. That's what we are. And, and uh, I'm, people I'm who are stupid enough from... to believe that you can go to war and cut taxes at the same time. Yeah, that's a tough one to believe, and that's a tough one to understand, especially when we don't have any money anyway. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, Joey on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Are you there, Joey? Yeah, what's up, Tom? How's it going? Man? It's going okay. Oh, man. This is ugly. I'm in an ugly situation, bro. I need guidance. What happened? Uh, I was in a situation where uh, I was renting a room, and uh, basically I was uh, my landlord tried to work it out so he could keep my deposit and get me out. And uh, when I decided I was going to stay, he stole my car. But because uh, I signed him over, I signed the car over to him because I owed a couple of uh, bills. It, technically, I couldn't do nothing about it. How did so you end up, Joey? How did you end up so poor? Well, I moved out here to become an actor. Oh. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, what, made you, what made you think you would succeed at that? Ah, uh, you know how it goes. Everyone, you should get into acting, da 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 you know. Where did All you that. come from, Joey? Uh, Boston. Boston, yeah. Yeah. So you left and I, Boston and your friends and your family and all the people you know and love. And yeah. you came to L.A. thinking you were going to become an actor. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't realize that most people like you uh, end up shining my shoes. Well, I thought, well, you know how it goes. You think, like, well, that's not going to be me. Yeah, but it's most people, including you. Well, right now, yeah, it's looking like that. Uh, uh, I went to school. I got two years under my belt, and I am going to finish up, but I figured, you know, if I'm going to act, what's the point of finishing school? So, Well, in case the acting thing doesn't work out, it would be yeah. a good uh, reason to go yeah, with it. I was it. naive enough to not even think about that, though. Right. So now I'm, I'm basically in a position where I, I don't know if I got any angles here, man. Well, uh, maybe you need to go back home. Nah, that's not an option. With my tail tucked between my legs, can't do it. Why not? Come on now. You have you have you have too much pride to go home. I was, it's not about that. I mean, I came up, I came out here to accomplish something. And yeah, but you know? but but son, you have failed. Already is done. It's final. <laughs> um, have you ever gotten an acting job? Well, yeah. Doing what? Oh, uh, I played a. Uh, I played some dead guy on the show that never hit. That's it? And I was in uh, a couple plays, small-time plays, but that's it. Yeah. And you're already 25 years old. Yeah, I know. I know. You're older than Scarlett Johansson, who's been in a bunch of hit movies already. I know. So... It's that. time for you. It's so time for you. I don't continue to act the thing. You know, I'm, I still don't want to what, move back in onto my mom's house. Well, where are you living now? Uh, in my car. In your car. Yeah, I think your mom's house would be a better bet. I just, there's got to be another option, though, you know? Well, there would be another option if you were succeeding as an actor. Yeah. But you're not. I, mean, I am. True. I mean, I am going back to school, though, but. Yeah, what are you studying? Well, I'm not actually back yet. I'm going to L.A. Valley College in December. 
Where are you going to live at that time? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm basically just saving up with, like, these little bowl jobs I'm doing now, you know? What are you doing for a living now? Uh, I drive a limo. Uh, I bounce at uh, different clubs, and I also do some courier work whenever I can get it. Yeah. yeah. And did you want to become an actor because you have always been a lover of the theater or because you thought it was a way to get money and become famous? Neither. I thought it was a way for me to, uh, to be honest, just bang as many broads as possible. He can, but also, but also, you know, it's, it's a cool profession. You know what I mean? It's a cool profession. It's just, you know, you get to pretend and just, you know, mess around and get paid for it. Yeah, but it's 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 much more than that for people who are really good at it. How so? Acting is a craft, one that takes no. years to learn to do correctly. No, that I understand. How much training did you get? Not not much. A couple classes at Ivana Chubbuck School. But that's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Are you another guy who thought you would play the lottery? You bought a ticket to the lottery. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, people who want to be successful, they go to school, they study, they work hard. But well, not you. Your idea, you told me. You said you wanted to bang as many broads as possible. That's why you got into it. I'm trying to imagine Sir Lawrence Olivier saying that. But, uh, what Robert, you Robert De Niro. You're forgetting the other part where I thought... It, 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 it is a cool profession, though. We could agree on that, right? To go it's and... cool if you're successful at it. So what are my angles now? That's what are your cool. angles? Yeah. Well, um, you're not studying acting in school, and you clearly don't have enough training. Well, yeah, but um, that's another thing. I could just So you're saying uh, to go and study acting at school? I'm saying that you need to go to school and study something. Maybe yeah. acting. Maybe something else. Like what? I don't know. What are your interests? It's, do you have any interest in anything besides like, banging yeah, yeah, bronze? Yeah, yeah, like, what, what? What? Like, like yeah, finance. Uh, but you finance. Know, finance. That's horrible right now. Well, what do you know about finance? You're living in your car. Who would hire you to help them with their finances? <laughs> well, if I get the proper degree, you ask me what I'm interested in, I give you an answer. Well, yeah, I understand you're interested in finance, but you're not very good at it. Yeah, but... <laughs> All right, so something else. Uh, I heard you uh, put that kid over the knee for cooking, but, yeah, that's, that's something yes, else. Yes, because the fact is... God love El Torito, but most people who study cooking end yeah. up working at El Torito, Chili's, Coco's, Applebee's. That's where they end up working. They call it culinary arts. Right. Yeah, I know, and your mom was a domestic engineer. So I so I basically just go to school and study something where I can get money at, make some money at. Well, I think that's a good idea. It's like every time I fly first class, yeah. they give you... Have you ever flown first class? Probably not, right? Yeah, I have, man. <laughs> really? Did you win a ticket from a radio contest? or How did you do that? <laughs> no, sir, I did But it was the, uh, the job I was working pay for. It. All right. So when you fly first class, they give you that menu. Yep. Yeah. Right? And in the menu, they say... Uh, today's dish was prepared by United Airlines chef Joe Blow. <laughs> it's like, United Airlines chef? I mean, what is he, an expert in uh, cryogenically freezing food? I mean, come on. <laughs> There's a chef preparing that food? Are you kidding me? No, that I understand. I was, I was, but that's like where that, most people who have culinary up. arts degrees end up. They're the chef for JetBlue. <laughs> I hear you, man, but 
I mean, like, even going back to school, I can't actually enroll into a school until I pay back uh, uh, the loans from the from that previous thing I was in school. How much do you owe? About 30 grand. 30 grand? Yeah. 30 grand? Yeah. <laughs> you have really dug a hole for yourself. I know. I'm in a corner here, man. Boy, you, you absolutely are. Ah, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Can you believe how short that break was? Take out a stopwatch. We have the shortest breaks ever. 13 days till Election Day. We're taking your temperature here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, thank you, Tom. Thank you for uh, taking my phone call. Sure. I'd like to, uh, I'm a uh, professional educator, and I've uh, taught and consulted on the college level for the past 25 years. And I'd like to address or talk about your views concerning the young adult in your age group and what happens to them and perhaps uh, some of the views and reinforce exactly what you've been talking about. And uh, just something to add here. Um, I don't think the young adult is aware of the prime window uh, of time between those ages of 18 and 30. And then the decisions that they make during that period of time or the decisions they do not make, how that affects their life. And you hear that over and over again uh, in, in, in your program. And that's what I like to listen to is, is, you know, if they just stayed in school, and you emphasize that, if you just stay in school and don't have a serious relationship, you can do something. And again, all that I can emphasize is that you are, if the word is right on, you absolutely are. Um, you talk about education, and that's paramount. And of course, what we're going through in your views are absolutely correct. Um, but keep in mind, too, or your audience, that a lot of kids can't, won't, don't have the skills to do the four-year, but they might think about the community college. Now, it does have the double track. They can go on to the four-year school or they can get the skills. Now, just I'm, I'm here to support the community college to a degree, but if you look at health care, nursing, auto techs, police science, fire science, computer science, plumbing, all those are available at the community college, and they don't have to spend their whole life in school. And those paid, I don't know, last time you had your car fixed, I don't know what you paid, but those are high. So anyway, I think you're, you're, you're right on. Uh, another misconception is uh, they come in my office all the time, and they have to drop out. And I ask them, why do they drop out? And usually two things. They have to support a car. That means buying insurance. Uh, or they have to support a girlfriend. And then it's all over. And if they just stay in school, and I always tell them, I don't care what, when you say the same thing, you beg, you borrow, you steal the money if you have to, but stay in school until you get skills. That's the name of the game, skills to be employable. And um, anyway, uh, I, I can't emphasize enough what, what you're doing. And uh, then one last thing here, and I don't want to tie up your phones here, is the, the, they argue and say they don't know what they want, and that's understandable. You hear that over and over again in your program. But all they have to do is go to a career center or to an adult center and take a vocational test, and they can have a printout and some choices in which to make with perhaps some confidence that that instrument will tell them or help them make these decisions. So I'm amazed at the number of people who call in here who don't have any interests or don't know what interests they have. That's right. That's that's what these career or these these they could, they could get personality tests, vocational tests, any of the colleges any that they have. Even the high schools can do that. And I suspect that most of these um, young people that call in have already done that, but they ignore it. But the, the instruments are, are are sophisticated enough to help them make choices, and that that's what they're about. They can do that for free, usually at adult centers if they're older, in their their community college uh, or any place they go, and 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 that's a valuable tool to help make those crucial divisions between 18 and 30. Very, very good points, Mark. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Joaquin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Joaquin. How you doing, Father? Do you care? Uh, not really, I guess. You know, I'm just here. I, I just so. love your show. Well, that's good. 
Uh, hey, Tom, I got a question. You know, I, I was sitting back, you know, just eating a hamburger, and I saw a commercial about Everest College. And they're telling me, you know, they're telling me that, that I could get a, a high school diploma, in, I mean, an associate in two years. Yes, that's well, that's it. To invest my money in? Well, an associate's degree is what they give out at a community college. No, but then again, I, I heard you got to finish your general ed classes to actually, you know, have, to actually get a degree. Well, did you drop out of high school? No, I, I finished high school. Well, then uh, when you say general ed courses, what are you referring to? It's because um, I was going to East L.A., and they told me that I got to take general ed classes to actually major in what I want to do. All right. Well, I, every college I've ever been to, and I've attended to myself and talked to a number of others in the process of trying to go to college, they all have a general program that uh, you have to uh, take the basic building blocks in order to get the degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't just walk in and say, well, I'm interested. Let's see. I'm, you can't walk in and say, well, I'm just interested in car repair and uh, gun repair. Uh, you know, um, I'm interested in, uh, you know, like uh, for repairing windshields on automobiles. Uh, I, I don't want to take any English or math or anything like that. Just just the good stuff. You can't do that. So, oh, so, 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 you're, so you're telling me that... The I'm telling you that you have to take the basic course of study to get a degree. That, that's why it does. I knew it. You know, because they're telling me you don't have to take. So no why basic. is there a pro why is there a problem with it? Oh, well, I don't know. If they're they're going to validate it, or you know, well, how how good does it look? Me saying I got a, a social degree on an Everest College. It's a degree, but you know, the school ain't that you know up there with uh, you know other co other colleges. Yes, but uh, but even an associate's degree requires a basic course of study. And let's not forget that many of the morons who go to community college uh, had lousy grades in high school. And so in I order to get... Phone, I got well, that's why you need to take the basic course of study. Uh, All right, Junior, you think that over. Uh, Kabir on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Mr. Likas, how are you doing? Doing great. Sounds good. I just had a general question. I'm actually, I just recently graduated. I'm 21 years old, and I'm thinking about going to law school. I could work in a, a legal department. My question is, do you think that you have to actually go to a top law school to be successful? I don't think you have to go to a top law school. I think you have to go to a good law school. Good law school. And even with the economy being kind of bad, do you believe that it's uh, the degree itself, a law degree, is worth it? I think uh, an advanced college degree does have value because I think as the economy deteriorates, you're going to see a bigger and bigger difference between the salaries of people who have a high school education or less and people who have college degrees and advanced college degrees. Okay, even if I'm putting myself like in a hundred grand of debt, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, is your plan to become an attorney? It is. What kind of attorney? I'm either a civil or a corporate attorney, corporate business law. I don't think we'll ever run out of a need for corporate attorneys. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it, sir. I, just, I don't want to take up much of your time. By the way, me. my recommendation to you is don't just talk to me. Do you know any corporate attorneys? Um, no, I don't. But um, pick a law. I right, pick a law firm. Uh, that okay. you admire or that you've heard good things about, and okay. write to the managing partner okay. and tell them point blank uh, that just what you asked me and ask if you can come down and talk to some attorneys and ask that very question. Okay. Get to know some people who are doing what you want to do for a living. If this was a lesson that was taught to me by my Aunt Rita when I was a teenager. Uh, when I wanted to get into radio, she told me to write to three radio personalities and ask them the best way to get into the business and ask them if it's really a good business to be in. Okay. And I wrote to three, and two wrote back, and one of them I met. Wow, okay. So uh, most of us don't ever know anybody in the business we're trying to get into. Okay. And, and And it would help if you had a mentor, or at least somebody would take a meeting with you. Definitely. Thank you for the advice, sir, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sam, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. So I'm calling because you're talking about, you know, wasteful spending and people's private lives, but I would also like to bring up wasteful spending in the government and, you know, Sarah Palin getting $150,000 for clothes in this last month alone and taking Wasilla's debt from $1 million to $20 million in 12 years. A town of like 7,000 people, $20 million, and charging the government per diems for her family's travel yep. and per diems to stay in her own house. Yes, we talked about that yesterday. That's ridiculous. And, you know, no wonder people have this wasteful spending and, you know, having $30,000 in debt and living in their cars. Because, you know, we, we get our examples from the government. We, you know, get your, we get our examples from people like Sarah Palin. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Here we are, less than two weeks down before Election Day. And uh, taking your temperature here about all kinds of things. Getting a lot of calls from people who are worried about their careers, worried about college. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Diana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to comment on this whole college thing. Um, I'm 24 years old. I have my master's degree. And um, through undergrad, I worked my way through it. I worked two jobs. I worked full time. I didn't really get a lot of help from my parents, but I made it work and I did it. And I'm kind of glad that these people are not really pursuing this college stuff because then it's just less competition for me. Yeah, I mean, I hope everybody drops out, knocks up their girlfriend. I'm in favor of that. I don't need any more competition. Right. But, it, I mean, it just can be done. And these culinary schools and all these schools that advertise on television, they're very expensive. And um, I worked in lots of restaurants where they would have the interns from these culinary schools um, complete their degrees. And, you know, you make like 10 bucks an hour after that. I mean, you're not going to be making any money at all. And these are really nice restaurants that I worked at. So <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah, well, I've seen stories repeatedly of people who spent thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on uh, culinary arts school, and then when they get out of school, uh, they become the uh, sous chef at uh, the Acapulco restaurant. Exactly, and that's how much I paid for my master's degree. Almost, I mean, it's you know, I don't know. <laughs> People just are un uninformed when it comes to that, and they don't well, know what they're yeah. getting themselves into. But then they like to be comfortable in all the. Two chefs and all the people who worked at the restaurants, they just wanted to cook and go home, and then they could play video games or role play online, which usually was the case at all the places I worked at. And I'm like, okay, if you want to waste your life, then be my guest. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, yeah, I think that girl was talking about, like, the school I need to go to or something. What school is that? Well, it's like a career school. A career school. You mean a trade school? Yeah, it's like a trade school. Uh, why haven't you been in school? I see here you're 22 years old. Why haven't you been in school the last four years? I called you last week, and I told you it's just bad. You called me last week. You're supposed to call once every 90 days. Anthony, hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Anthony. Hey, man, let me tell you about the story. One of my uh, my high school counselor last year, what he told me when I decided to tell him what I wanted to do. I told him that I wanted to get a, I wanted to get into maybe business administration, and he said you should be a mechanic instead. This he obviously is, doesn't think much of your intellect. I mean, I don't know why he was. He, he said this to so many students in this school. I mean, there've been complaints about him throughout the whole school. I mean, you have kids. I mean, from left and right saying things about this guy. He he doesn't give no encouragement at all. But I mean, to me, I took it in a positive way. And I saw it as a challenge. I was like, I'm going to prove myself, hopefully, you know, come back. And I can prove to this guy that I made something out of my life and that I'm worth something. Good for you. You know what? Sometimes that's what it takes uh, to uh, motivate you. 
is somebody underestimating you. The best thing that ever happened in my life was my father telling me that he would not help me get into radio. Uh, well, he, but- he didn't intend it that way. He hoped that I would become an attorney as a result. But it had the opposite effect. I was determined to succeed. There we go. There we go. The opposite effect. That's true. Honestly. That's very true. Thank you for that. Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, just to go back to politics for a second, I'm sure you know this, but I wanted to make sure your viewers were aware of the fact that if they start wearing their pro-Obama clothes or McCain, whatever, to the polls, um, day of voting, they're going to get turned away. It's against the law to be, I believe, within 100 feet of uh, the campaign polls. And the Obama, the, the McCain people are counting on this because they're thinking if you're going to be pro-Obama, everyone's wearing their shirts, they're going to be really excited on, on um, uh, you know, when they go to vote, and they're hoping to turn you away, and they're thinking that we won't go home and change our shirts and come back. We won't bother. So you cannot wear your Obama clothes to the polls. That's a good point to make. And, also and a, lot, a lot of the people who will be voting for Obama are voting for the first time, and they don't know that. Exactly. And I also just want to tell you that if you ever get tired of radio, I think you should go into politics because I would vote for you for president anytime. Really? Absolutely. I've been trying to call you for days to tell you that. I'm such a fan. I'll keep that in my back pocket. <laughs> especially now that you're talking politics, I love you even more. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here we are, the leaner, sleeker, faster Tom Likas show with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. Here, check it out. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yes, it's the Tom Likas Show. Ask for it by name. 1-800-5800-TOM. We are here 13 days before Election Day. I'm taking your pulse. I'm continuing to take your pulse. Uh, all of a sudden, a lot of people are calling in now, and they're all concerned about their careers. They're concerned about college. And, um, of course, all these concerns will play into how people are going to vote. Dylan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dylan. Yes. You busy? No. Smoking weed? Not yet. Not yet. Um, I had a couple questions for you, Tom. My first question was, where to go with my life after high school? How about college? I was thinking about college, and I was thinking about the military. Two options in my eyes. I was thinking about going to college and majoring in law, becoming a... Lawyer. Right. You're, do I have to say, uh-huh, every three seconds to get you to continue, or are you going to stop and I have to drag it out of you? All right. School is really not my thing. I'm really what not. Maybe it's not your thing. Focusing. Focusing in school. I'm distracted. I get distracted really easy, and I don't like completing. I completed high school, and that's about it. Have you been to a therapist? No. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I don't think I need a therapist. Yeah, you do. Really? If what you say is true, you do. Why is that? Because that's the kind of issues therapists deal with. All right. All right. What about the military? You don't think that's a good idea? You think that doesn't require an attention span? Um, not as much as school. Uh-huh. I have, I could, How do you know you haven't been in the military? Because I let's heard- say there's let's say you're at war, which we are, All right. and let's say you're in the middle of combat, right. which you could be. All right. Yeah, you better be able to pay attention. It's not that I can't pay attention, but in school, sitting there in class, it's hard to pay attention if there's nothing going on. Yeah, but it, there's not nothing going on. It, you, you're not interested in what they're saying. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, going to the military would accomplish what for you? Um, it's physical. I'm physically in. I'm physically fit. I'm able to do what they ask me to do. 
And and I'll then what would you do if that. you if you didn't get sent to war, or if you did get sent to war and you survived? What would you then do with your life after that? Um, I would. I was thinking about the being a police officer and an MP. Because why? Because you're too lazy to go to a real school. I guess you could say that. Hmm. But I'm not. So you're calling. You're calling me why? To ask you to get advice from you. What? What advice do you want? Advice: What to do with my life? You have no attention span. You are somewhat lazy. <laughs> no, am, you just told us you have no attention span. I am lazy. I, it's just hard for me to focus in class. Well, and then I, I said, go to a therapist. That was my advice. You don't want my advice. What would a therapist tell me? How? Like, I'm not a therapist. How yeah, that's what you go me? to a therapist for. When you go to a therapist, they'll diagnose you, and they will help you with the problem. All right. But well, the, you're you're being very dismissive of what I'm saying. You ask me for advice, and then you don't like my advice. I just wanted to hear your advice. That was it. No, I gave you advice, and you don't like it. I'll, I'm going to think it over more. I, mean, I don't think you're thinking anything over. I think you're thinking to yourself, this isn't what I bargained for. This isn't what I was hoping for. Aren't you? It's really not what I was hoping for. Yeah. Uh, what were you hoping for? I was hoping for, um, I guess, helping making the decision. Which decision? The decision of my life, what to do with it. Sounds to me like you've already made it. You're going to go into the military, and uh, you're not going to study law, and then you're going to become a policeman, which you don't have to go to the military to become a policeman, but that, that seems to be what you are thinking about doing. Why go to the military if your plan is not to get a real college education? I can get a college education in the military paid for. Yeah, but you, you just said you have no attention span. But the college is not the same in the military. Yeah, what? it is. Actually, the, uh, the military will pay for college at a, an actual university. The military told me I have three. There's three types of colleges I can go to. One is the college where I don't go as long, as many hours. And I don't get as many credits, but I get more military credits. I'll be an and what are you what are you going to do with those military credits? Be higher rank. If you get more credits, but but you, get but you already rank. said you you your hope was to get out of the military and become a cop. But I want to make enough money in the military, and to make that money, you have to be higher rank. Why why do you need to make money in the military to then leave the military and become a policeman? I don't understand. Because policeman is what I want to do. But you could do that without going into the military. I could, but it would be easier. It looks better becoming a policeman coming out of the military. Why? I, LAPD can't find cops right now. Really? Really? They're advertising on Dodger games on the radio. Not a baseball fan, really. But well, take it from me. They've been advertising on the radio trying to find cops. Right. You don't have to go to the military to become a police officer. Well, thanks for your advice. Yeah, this has been painful. one 800 tom It's Ryan in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. I, I, I love these short commercials. I really do. I, is it something you're sticking with, man, for a while? Yeah, yeah. No, that's the deal. Shorter breaks. That's excellent, man. That's one of the reasons I listen to AM radio. You know, you, you listen to this FM crap, you get a bunch of terrible music, uh, you know, 20 minute commercials, back to terrible music. You know, I just, I, I think it's awesome what you're doing, Tom. Um, you know, that, that's, that's basically what I got to say, man. I, I, I really appreciate it, man. Thank so you for it, that. It, Brett on the Tom Likas show, hello. AJ on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. First time caller, a long time listener. Thank you. Um, well, I just wanted to comment. I really didn't have any much to say. But um, have you ever noticed the thing about uh, no kids left behind? What in about high school? it? I think that's just a product of you know our society right now, making sure that everybody passes out. But what you end up is with a C grade student throughout life, and then they end up with C grade lives, and then they aspire to these goals that they can never achieve. 
And then these community colleges just buy into it. And it's pathetic. I mean, I'm a pharmacist. I worked really hard. I busted ass. Can I say ass? Yeah, okay, I guess I can. Yeah, you just did. Okay. Yeah, so I busted ass in high school. Um, you know, I didn't party every weekend, and it paid off. And, you know, now I make good money. I'm not being foreclosed on. You know, everything's looking good. So the point is, you know, all these therapists come up with these syndromes, you know, attention deficient that, this and that. All it is is a screwed up word of just saying that you're stupid. I just think that, uh, as you can hear on this program, there's a lot of people looking for excuses for why they never achieve anything. Yeah, like that. I mean, that your last caller, Dylan. Why don't you send him to the military? Why did you talk him out of it? I mean, that's the best thing he can do. He can go in there. They can motivate him. Tell him what to do because he needs to be told what he needs to do. But uh, the military will only have so much patience, and he could easily get an honorary or a dishonorary discharge and get bounced. True, but I mean, it's just. Half these kids just don't have motivation. I mean, my dad made sure he kicked my ass every once in a while. Uh, you know what? I, if people don't have motivation, I don't think it's our job to give them motivation. You know what? I need. I don't need the competition. Less motivated people is fine with me. More money for me, more success for me, less for them. I agree. You know, if they're not motivated, tough. But I just love the complaints. I, I'm full of them. I'm getting tons of complaints here. It's pathetic. People in the front seat of their car. They're living in the car. People who have no attention span. I mean, out outrageous. It is pretty ridiculous. I mean, how, I mean, how can you be? I, mean, I know we've had a lot life? of layoffs in the radio business, but now these people are all calling in. For God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.